This segment is brought to you by Presler Law Firm, helping accident victims since 1959. Thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday, March 11. You're watching The Morning Show. All right, listen up. Fender benders, you know what they are. You're driving along, someone bumps into your car, or worse, you bump into theirs. Now, what do you do? You stop, inspect your damage, maybe exchange information, maybe not. Maybe you're not sure what to do at all. Well, here to explain is John Philp. He's a personal injury lawyer from Presler Law. Welcome, John. Thanks for having me. I want to start this with my own personal experience. Um, recently, I clipped someone's side mirror. We were driving um, on, on just, you know, your average pretty residential street. And the, the damage was so minor that I thought, let's just exchange information. And that's what we did. We settled it out of pocket. But when I got home that night, I thought, did I do the right thing? Because he could easily, I mean, we, we took a picture of the damage, but he could easily, he could have easily said, well, I actually injured my wrist, or, I, you know, there was more damage th than the, what you agreed on. Yeah, this is very typical in Ontario. Mm -hmm. There's thousands upon thousands of these types of accidents yeah. every year in Ontario. So it's very typical for people not to want to report to their insurance company because they're afraid their premium rates are going to go up. Well. The fact is in Ontario, if you're not at fault for an accident, mm. you don't have to worry about a deductible and you don't have to worry about your premiums going up. That's a little different if you're at fault. So mm -hmm. if you're the at fault driver, you may want to approach the driver and say, listen, let's not go through the insurance companies. Let's just try and work this out together. The problem with that is exactly what you said, Chris. Mm -hmm. If somebody is, is injured, what happens if they're injured? Um, with minor accidents, mm -hmm. you know, for example, if if you're on the highway mm -hmm. and it's stop and go traffic and someone bumps into you from behind mm -hmm. and it's barely any damage to your car, that happens all the time. Yeah. And with these types of cases, you'd be shocked at how many these come across my desk where people three, five days mm -hmm. later, that's when the onset of whiplash symptoms mm -hmm. come on and you don't know at the scene. Yeah. So I always err on the side of caution. Always report always report. And you also said something that's very interesting during the break and, and, and that is that you cannot in Ontario sue someone if there has been no injury. Well it's not that there's no injury. Mm -hmm. In Ontario you can't sue if, if, if there's property damage to your vehicle mm -hmm. you can't sue the other driver just for the property damage. Okay. That is what all the insurance policies say you, you cannot do so. Mm -hmm. uh, we're precluded from doing that but if there's an injury that's why I'm in business. <laughs> if there's an injury, yes. then you can sue. Okay. And, and tell me about the process of suing. Let's say you're the person, um, let, let's start with B, if you are the person at fault. Do you, uh, you know, do you get, how do you defend or protect yourself from someone saying that they were injured if maybe they weren't as injured, they weren't injured at the scene? Well, listen, in every circumstance yeah. when you're involved in an accident, there's a couple things you need to be very mindful of. If you're at fault or if you're not at fault. Mm -hmm. First of all, assess the situation. Are you injured? Do you feel pain? Mm -hmm. If you are, call 911. Get the police to the scene. Uh, get the information from the other driver. If there's witnesses around, if you see someone that looked and mm -hmm. saw the accident, get their contact information. That is essential for any lawsuit. Uh, take pictures. People don't think about it, mm -hmm. but take pictures not just of the damage, but where your vehicles are situated, how the accident unfolded. Um, very important. Now here's the thing, that sounds like a very involved process. And, and let's say you were on a street that's not so busy, I, I can see a couple cars stopping and making sure they get all the paperwork done. Right. If you're on the highway, it's a completely different situation. It, it absolutely is. And I'll, I'll relate my own personal story mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. I was on the Gardner, stop and go traffic, yeah. and taxi cab hit me from behind. Mm. And there was very little damage to my car, um, but you know, there's cars whizzing by, mm. there's people honking, yeah. it's, it's terrifying, it is. What, and, and, and even pulling off to the side is terrifying. It is, and so you know, what I tell people if they're in that circumstance, look at the situation. If, if there's a lot of traffic, a lot of cars, if you're concerned about your safety, because that's, that's mm -hmm. primary, uh, snap a picture of the guy's vehicle, snap a picture of their license, 
ask them to pull off, or not their license, excuse me, their, their license plate. Yes. Uh, ask them to pull off at the next exit, because you never know. People may just drive away. Mm -hmm. um, but as long as you have an Your ability to identify them, you should be okay. All very great tips. John Philp, thank you so much. He's a personal injury lawyer at Presner Law. And we want to remind you that if you have any personal injury questions for John and his team at Presner Law, visit our Facebook page at facebook.com morningshowto. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me again.